So for example, if I want to find the probability X greater than or equal to four, but I want to write only what is a number which I can say X greater than X a number. What should be the number? Essentially, either I can write five. If I write five, it will not include four. So I say three. So that means if my X value is three or three, that means I can write four or more as well. So they are same statements in discrete. So in discrete, if this is, so therefore after continuity, continuity correction, I will write probability of X greater than equal to 3.5. That means either I have to add 0 0.5 or I have to subtract 0 0.5. In this case, in this case, it will be probability X less than equal to 14.5 less than. So this is called continuity correction. I know it is not very simple thing, but if you know what is number line, then you can easily find it. And I think in calculus book, uh, Howard Enton, you have this number line concept in first chapters as well. So you can consult Howard Enton on Google to see how to analyze, how to read number lines or your school books. So I continue in place of using specific numbers, I have used a B and this is the way to do either we add something or we subtract something in these numbers. I am not going into much detail, you can practice. And the next thing is that if you have very large hand and suppose 100, 1000, then you don't need these things. You will not have any difference in your probability results when you will use normal distribution, using normal distribution using this formula. And therefore, you will not have any difference in the results. So you don't worry about this chip table. But if you have a small samples like 30, 35, 25, then you have to use this table. So this is the difference between uh, when you have large, but you are computer science students, you will not have a small observations. You, most of the time, you will have large data sizes. Unless you are doing something which have a small, like software testing, software testing, alpha beta testing, or sorry, beta testing, you will not have very large testers in your company. Maybe you're in a software house, maybe you have two, three testers, software testers, and maybe seven or eight software developers. You cannot ask those three testers to make a data set of 30 sample size or 50 sample size. So one of the application in software development industry. So anyway, it is, it is, this is a question. It is known that in a sack of mixed grass seeds, 35% are ray seeds. They are particular type of seeds. Use the approximation, normal approximation to the binomial distribution to find the probability that in a sample of 400 seeds, look, it's a big sample. There are less than 120. Okay, now I can see P is equal to 35.35 also. Here in the question, we have probability of particular seed is 0 0.35 and N equals 400. Therefore, what will be the mean? Mean is equal to NP is equal to four, 400. 400 times 35, somebody can put for me, is equal to what value? So if I say 400 times 0.35, which is 140, the mean, mark my attendance. Sayyid Wasif Ali, please mark my attendance. Oh, sorry, I'm recording. Uh, uh, it is 140 and Variance equals NPQ, you will find 400 times uh, 0 0.35 times 0 0.65. You know, P1 minus P is equal to Q. So P is 0.35, so Q equals to 0 0.65. And times 0 0.65. So 260. No, 400 times 0 0.35 times 0 0.65 is 91, if I am not wrong. Uh, 400 times 0 0.35 is 140 and again times 0 0.65 is 91. Okay, so what we need to do, we have to convert the question into saying probability less than 120, probability of X 
x less than 120 is equal to probability of x uh, z less than x minus mu x is 120 mu is 140 divided by 91 so this is the calculation we have to convert into z because n is very large i don't worry about whether i am doing continuity correction or not doing continuity correction i mean i am not subtracting 0.5 it will be not make any big difference so z less than minus 20 divided by 91 some number not this one calculator so i say minus 20 divided by 20 divided by 91 0.2198 2198 22.219 okay 219 so yeah we cannot have this liberty we can have 0 0.22 so if i go to the here below minus 0 0.22 and I calculate, so it is 0 0.4129. So this probability is minus 0 0.2149. So you can see we can do probability with this formula as well, because sample size is 400, we don't need to subtract 0 0.5 or add. Less than 120 means equal to less than equal to 119, 119.5. Even if I do this way, it will be, in place of 20, it will be 19.5. So if I calculate again, 19.5 divided by 91, 0 0.21978, something similar answer. So you will not have any problem if n is large. You will have the same probability value using that table. So this is continuity correction when n is 30, 25, 35, and so on. So you can try this. Oh, I have solved it, sorry. So you can do, I did solve by continuity correction as well. You can try this way. You can try, you can use this question and convert this into Z and answer, get the answer. And also try with using 120 and 150 here and try the answer. You will find there is no difference or maybe fourth place is different. We don't care too much. Last thing is that when uh, Poisson distribution can be con uh, when Poisson distribution can be converted to normal distribution, it says that when lambda is more than 20, then the Poisson distribution can be replaced by a normal distribution. I repeat, I say that uh, Poisson distribution can be replaced by normal distribution. That means we will be using normal table to calculate the probability for Poisson distribution. See, Poisson distribution is a discrete distribution that counts the number of occurrences of anything in a particular time, like number of patients or number of vehicles or number of mistakes by a person in a page, blah, blah. But Poisson is a discrete, but normal distribution is a continuous distribution. So see how one discrete event converts to a continuous phenomena. So, uh, but we know that mean of the Poisson is mu and variance is also mu. So we can convert uh, this also into Z distribution like uh, we will use z is equal to x minus mean divided by the standard deviation equals to x minus LAMPT lambda divided by the square root of lambda. So this is the formula that when we use, when we use z, z distribution or standard normal distribution in place of Norm, uh, in place of Poisson distribution. So I will not go into detail. You can see this and try to solve. If you have any difficulty, you can ask questions. And this is a short table I made um, that was lesson from other place. And we had this short summary that when to use Poisson, when to use normal distribution in place of Poisson. That means when lambda is 30 and above. If you will read business statistics books, it will say lambda greater than 15. If you will use engineering books, it might say uh, lambda greater than 25 or 30. So we have somehow a moderate value. 
same is assuming maybe 15 maybe 25 is fine as well and n greater than 20 because if you are doing business analytics or business studies you have n greater than 20 30 if, if you are doing computer science then 30 and 50 is the lower size minimum size so this is a short table that explain how and when we can use a normal approximation for a discrete phenomena like binomial distribution and Poisson distribution they are discrete phenomena okay that's it end of lesson if you have any question let me know and uh, then we can see session lab session and stop i will i today i will just explain so this is now this is labs assignment one i am not limiting you to only using specific packages or specific commands in r because r is a very big software and tool based and package based and programming based so up to you so we have to generate 1000 random number from binomial distribution you know binomial distribution have two parameters n number of trials and p is the probability of success so if i want to generate um, if i want to generate numbers what i have to do is to start my r studio and because even i don't remember commands so what i have to do is to use the online support that i provided at the at, at, at the end of this if i go to this this website statistics group there are many many people working free, as a freelance binomial density this is the command so distribution of binomial so i say binomial distribution it is r and i say new script if i don't want to store suppose d minus d means the distribution of binomial so it will give me binomial probabilities and uh, then we can apply that even if like one minute there there is a simple one command one command well if i go if i go here on the side so i have placed four uh four uh, four standard oh. yeah r bin r binom this is a simple command where is r this here is r i leave this one because this seems a bit complicated r binomial means random random number from binomial 1000 random numbers n equals to 10 and what is the value of p p equals 0 0.1 so 10, 30, 50, 100. Okay, I need. So here, here n equals 10 and p equals 0 0.1. So first function clicked and it is giving me first distribution. So I can say simulation 1, 1. Copy. Then I say simulation one two, simulation one three, simulation one four. So we have four simulations, but 10, 30, 50, 100. When it is probability of success is 0 0.1. 1, 2, 3, 4. You see, we can get four results. Similarly, 1000 results, n is equal to the same. P is equal to 0 0.3. I think the second value is 0 0.3. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. I say 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. If I go to the environment, you see it's just storing here 1000 values in each column. So I just say 1, 2, 3, 4. So I got four numbers. If I click any of this, I can use, if I want to see any of this, view S11, it will show me 10. Three, so basically, it out of ten trials and probability of success zero point one, 
we can have we can have uh, various different successes. Can you hear me? Because I am. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can view, for example, if I want to view two, four, so two, four is here because why it is so large values? Probability of success is 3.3. And 100 values. So if I do this, you see out of 100, maybe 31 success, 29 success, and so on. So we have different number of success. So you can you need to change 0.3 with 0.5 and 0.7 again. Uh, so you can simulate all these values. So this is part one of this practical. You will have total 16 values, 16 simulations, four types of n and four types of p. You will have 16 simulations. Then you will see. What is the impact of sample size? Like if I have sample size 30, if I just 10, 30, 50, 100, how the size of the number of successes changes. And if we change, increase the probability of success P, how the number of successes X. So this, this is showing, this is showing X, S, X values. X means number of successes out of 10 trials or 100. So this specific column, because I am talking about a specific term. Oh, simulation. Simulation stands for generating artificial environment. You can say virtual reality. Virtual reality is the field where you generate artificially any natural thing. Like we have seen artificial flowers, artificial like images. So like artificial human being like robots, robots. So, so there are artificial intelligence where you mimic that in human intelligence into uh, uh, animals and plants and uh, robots. So this is all simulation. Everything is simulation. Plus simulation is the field that gives you the power to test any phenomena without physically doing it. For example, if you are constructing an airport, you don't have to first make the airport and then test it. You can do everything in simulation. So every engineering, medical, social science problems, they solve it by simulations. Even transport, you know, uh, um, logistics, logistics means supply chain management type things. All of this also first simulated in the labs and then they are implemented. Otherwise, nobody will invest money to a failed project. So they simulate it, which is like only 1% to 10% of the total cost. It's, it's a very, very big field and it's used in everywhere even the programming languages and the hard disk that you are using they have uh, random number simulators or generators to store data and retrieve data from your hard disk uh, so it's a big field you can you can see it's a lot about it virtual reality augmented reality artificial intelligence they are all some of the fields okay then we have compute mean and variance so easy so for example what is the mean of S11 is this. What is the variance of S11? It is this. You can do it for every variable or you can also do summary. No, it's not giving you values. So you can do mean and variance each for each of this. You can store all these answers into a single data frame as well. And then you can find the mean variance directly for all the values in the data frame. Plotting. Plotting, I, I make you free. You can use any package, like you see, this is ggplot. You have to do maybe 30 or 50, 30 minutes to one hour study on what is ggplot. You can do this type of overlapping graphs. You can do any type of plotting, like you can do you this plot, this type of plotting, simplest one. So, uh, and this type of cumulative function plotting. I mean, it's up to you how much time you have, you can put on your study. The more time you will put, you will get more better graphs like this one, P is equal to 0.2, P is equal to 0.5, N is equal to 100. So for each sample size, like 10 and 10, you can see different values of P, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. You can plot them like this. Is there any command for this? 
yes there is a command for the gg plot and this is the command and you can have two plots or maybe three plots see it is showing two different plots and the merging merging is represented by a high green color the more green color so i have given you some links simple links if you want to study more you can do more exploration but if you want to complete this assignment only and not beyond this then you have simple so this, look this is also ggplot with a dark colors the command is bigger so if you want to study more you can do exploration so it is more exploratory rather than limiting you second question will be about um, poisson distribution like binomial command, there is command for Poisson distribution as well. You can use the Poisson distribution and simulate random numbers, same like we did for the binomial distribution. So first three parts are about uh, binomial and last three parts are about Poisson distribution. One thing, one thing is that, you know, mean is equal to NP. Now it's a problem. <laughs> the problem is that we have 16 different answers here four from here, four from there. So what is possible? You can assume, suppose n is equal to 30 here. Uh, comments. Assume n equals to 30 and p equals 0 0.5. So don't go for all results, just go for n equals 30 and p equals to 0.5 and compare the results and compare, find the mean and variance after finding the mean and variance, then you can compare with the simulated result. So mean is equal to NP, 30, 30 times 0.5 is 15, and 15 times 0.5 is 7.5. So 15 mean and 7.5 variance. And corresponding to this, it will be the third simulation, three, ninth simulation from your, from your exercise, ninth simulation, maybe whatever, where N is 50, NP is equal to 0.5, and you find the mean and theory the simulated mean and variance. How do you find the simulated mean and variance? I just explained to you that if it is a simulation like 50, and suppose I copy it from here. Suppose this is this part three. So it's Arvin 50.5. Yeah, you have to change this comment if you like. I, I made this comment, so this is not here. So you can type comments by hash sign. Okay, so I did this, and then I can find the mean and variance. Mean equals to 24.98, variance is equal to 12 point something. You see? The theoretical mean was NP. NP is equal to 50 times 0.5 is 25, yeah. So theoretical, just to show you, theoretical mean is equal to NP is equal to 50 times 0 0.5 is equal to 25. And theoretical variance equals to NPQ is equal to 50 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 12.5. So how much different they are? You see this value is 24.98. And the answer for this one, how much? 12.7, See how close they are. It is 12.5, it is, 12.7 it is 24.9 it is 25 so you can compare if you take the difference between simulated mean and theoretical mean 25 minus or uh, 24.982 minus 25 it will it is called bias bias means the difference between theoretical mean and actual mean and, and the simulated mean did you find any difference between empirical mean simulated and the actual actual mean are NP and NPQ. So you will find, yeah, there is some difference, very minor difference between theoretical and simulated mean and variances. This is the assignment, just practically. Graphically, it's up to you how you want to present them. And some of the references are here. 
Um, is there any question, any comment? For a shoe hold up, you can ask them as well, if you have any confusion. Okay, that is all for this week. You need to come how to submit the assignment. Good question. Uh, you can create all this code. And I don't know, you, are, you, you people are using GitHub repositories. If you are using, that's good. If you are not using, then you can just simply complete this assignment and send the PDF file. How to do PDF file? So you, I think last time I explained, file, new, R markdown. R markdown is a notebook. I open this. If I do R markdown, it will it will create a notebook in the notebook. It is file. Yeah, uh, yeah, old okay. So you can install R markdown. That's a, that's a more easier way that I am explaining that my, yeah, untitled is called lab. Assignment 01 and your name here. Suppose you want to create a word file or you want to create a PDF. Now it's really required my text. Word file or HTML file. If it is Word file, click OK. You will find cell, and here you will paste all these commands. You can paste cell by cell, you can paste all in one. And if I paste everything here and Control Shift Enter. it will show me the outputs but it is yeah it is not showing me output because i have stored them control c control v control shift enter yeah but it is a large large numbers probably it will not show me here so if i just limit myself to this point See, it is showing me all the number. You don't have to print all these numbers in your Word file. Okay, then file, K-N-I-T, knitting, knit document. And this is assignment one, section A. If I say store this on the desktop, and I say save, you will see Word document. In the Word document, it is showing me only those things that I asked for printing. If I ask to print the commands as well, it will show me the commands as well. So if you want to try it this way, or if you want to try the copy paste from R to PDF, you are free to do any of these two. So I don't want to limit you, but it's better to uh, learn how to do R markdown. Okay, please mark. Anything, any questions? Then we finish for today and you can submit in um, one week or two weeks time. Not limited, but assignment is due today. Okay, thank you very much. End of lesson.